If you are completing the MRF in 2024, give me the next 10 minutes of your undivided attention because this video is going to go through everything that you need to know to prep for MRF, to show up on MRF day ready to go and PR this workout. Here at Fit Grind, we do MRF every single year. It's a workout that I, we always host and I love doing because it's a workout of sacrifice and there's just a lot of meaning to this workout. This is a very challenging workout and you need to have structure in this workout. And that's exactly what we're gonna provide. I'm gonna tell you what you need to do on the first mile, how to partition your reps and how to have a plan of attack with this workout so you can get through it and you can PR this workout. Now, before we hop into this video, I have a free 2024 MRF prep guide on my website. I'll leave the link in the comments in the description below. This is gonna tell you some things that you need to test. It's gonna build off of some of the content that we talked about in today's video and in previous videos. So after you're gonna watch this video, make sure you go download it. Like I said, it's a free document on my website, fitgrindformula.com. I'll leave the link in the comments in the description below. So MRF. One mile run, 100 pull-ups, 200 push-ups, 300 squats, one mile run. We're going to go in order. I'm going to tell you the plan of attack, how to structure it, and give you some different examples on what happens when shit hits the fan. So as far as your first mile, whatever you are capable of running one mile in, say your previous PR and your one mile run that you've tested recently, you need to pull that pace back a little bit. You're not going to PR Murph and you're not going to win this workout in the first mile. So say for example, that you can run a six minute mile. What I would do on Murph day is I would pull it back anywhere from one to two minutes in that first mile. You want to get the blood flowing. You have to realize that there's a lot of volume left to do in this workout and a lot of fatigue ahead. And by taking just one to two minutes back, you're going to be able to push later in the workout. We're going to be able to actually make up time. And we'll talk about that in a second on how you can make up time on your rounds of five, 10, 15 of your pull-ups, your push-ups, and your squats. So like I said, make sure that you do not shoot yourself in the foot in this first mile. This is where it can really make or break your workout. So pull it back just a little bit, and I promise you're gonna be able to go faster, and you're gonna be able to actually set a better time because of doing so. Now, after you've completed that first mile, you're gonna come in, and what you need to do is you need to go right to the pull-up bar and start your first set. Don't waste any time. You need to chalk your hands real quick, but head over to that pull-up bar and complete your first set of five pull-ups, drop to the ground, do your 10 push-ups, and then stand up and do your 15 air squats. Now, what you want to try and do is you want to try and structure the 20 rounds of 5, 10, 15 into a certain time frame. So say, for example, if you can complete this in 40 seconds and you're trying to go sub 40 on Murph, you want to complete the 5, 10, 15 in 40 seconds, take 20 seconds of rest, and you complete 5, 10, 15, 5 pull-ups, 10 push-ups, 15 squats every minute on the minute or say that it takes you a minute, you take 15 to 20 seconds, and then you complete another five, 10, 15. The idea is you wanna take micro rest at the end of each round, and everyone's gonna be very different on what this looks like, depending on your fitness level and what you're able to complete those rounds in, but you wanna take micro rest so that you can be consistent with your rounds. What we don't wanna do is we come in, we're pumped, we run that first mile as hard as we can, we come in and we complete the first five rounds, like 40 seconds each, and you're just ripping through this workout, because what's gonna happen is you're gonna get hit by a freaking truck and you are gonna start to fatigue and those rounds are gonna start to get drawn out. So instead of running into the, the room, hopping on that pull-up bar and going like a madman, pull it back a little bit, take a deep breath and have patience with this workout. If you can take just micro rest at the end of each, each round and go through all 20 rounds, say you're doing it every minute on the minute, that's only 20 minutes. And then from there, if you go do a 10 minute mile, 10 minute mile, which that gives you 40 minutes of total time. So like I said, if your goal is to go sub 40, you need to realize that the rounds of 5, 10, 15, the 20 rounds of your pull-ups, your push-ups, and your squats is where you're going to make up the bulk of your time. It's not going to be on the first mile. More than likely, it's not going to be on the second mile because at that point, you're just going to be fatigued. And we'll talk about that in a second. Where you're going to make up your time is by being smart, being strategic, and being efficient with your rounds of five pull-ups, 10 push-ups, and 15 squats. Now in that free Murph document that I have on my website, I had this laid out on how you can structure this, how you can test this. So it's not like you just wing it on Murph day. I would highly recommend that you test your capability first. And like I said, go download the document. It's gonna give you more structure on how you can specifically do that. Next, I wanna talk about what happens if you start to hit muscle failure on either the pull-ups or the push-ups. Typically your air squats are just gonna be kind of a movement where it's just active recovery and you're not gonna hit muscle failure on your air squats. 
predominantly people are going to have muscle failure on either the pull-ups or the push-ups. And here's what you can do. And I'll talk about both. If the pull-ups fail, the push-ups fail, how you can partition those reps a little bit to keep moving and try and stay with that structure of going every 40 seconds or every 45 or every minute or whatever the structure is that you're trying to stay with. So say that your pull-ups start to fatigue. You're not able to complete five pull-ups in a row. This is what I would do. I would do three pull-ups. Then I'd hop down to the ground. You're going to do 10 push-ups go back to the pull-up bar, do two pull-ups, so that gives you five, and then you complete your 15 air squats. So you're breaking up those five pull-ups into three pull-ups, 10 push-ups, two pull-ups, 15 air squats. So you're still getting five pull-ups every round, 10 push-ups every round. Doing it this way is gonna be much faster than if you just start to crank out singles or those rounds start to draw on. If you can just keep moving, that's the key. So say your pull-ups fatigue, you complete the next muscle group because Murph is great where it's structured, where you have a pull, you have a push and you have a lower body. All the exercises don't conflict with each other. So if one muscle group fatigues, then you move on to the next. You want to keep moving so you can keep chipping away at this workout. Now, say for example, that your push-ups start to fatigue. What I would try and do is get your five pull-ups. You're going to go to the ground and hit five push-ups. You're going to stand up and do your 15 air squats. And then you're going to complete your last five push-ups. You're still going to get five pull-ups and push-ups, 15 air squats but you're just breaking it up. And this for a lot of people is going to be where you're going to have to partition those reps a little differently, especially in those later rounds, maybe rounds 11 through 20. Now this gets a little more complicated if your pull-ups and your push-ups start to fatigue, but don't worry, you can still structure it a little bit differently. It just takes a little moving through those reps a little bit faster. You'd be quick with your transition. So if your pull-ups and your push-ups start to fatigue in the later rounds, you're going to complete three pull-ups, go to the ground, do five push-ups, stand back up, be quick, two pull-ups, back to the ground, five push-ups, and then you're going to complete your 15 air squats. There's going to be a little more transition here. So you have to be faster with those transitions, but this is still a great way that you can structure it to avoid muscle failure. The last thing you want to do with this workout is hit muscle failure, because what happens at that point is you're just going to start to turn into a couple reps at a time. And those rounds are going to get really long. And this is where the workout's going to start to draw out. And this is where you're going to either make or break those rounds. The last thing that I'm going to talk about is the last mile run. Now, there's really no tips. There's no secrets with this mile run. The goal is just to go right to it. So as soon as you finish your last air squat, your 300th air squat, try to start that run right away. It's going to be slow. It's going to hurt. It's not going to feel good, but just try to start. The first like 400 meters is going to be rough. You're going to be looking for a rhythm, but that's what you really need to try to fall into is a rhythm. The first half a mile is going to be rough. It's going to be tough. You just have to find a way to get through it. And that's the whole purpose of this workout is it's sacrifice. It's not meant to be easy. You learn a lot about yourself, but if you can get through that last, that last mile, and especially the first 800 meters of the last mile, you can start to fall into a rhythm. And then once you get to that, like last half a mile to 400 meters left in that last mile run, just try and finish everything that you have. Just dig deep, finish strong, give it everything you've got. At this point, your legs are going to be trashed. Your lungs are going to be burning, but just give it everything you got. Like I said, this workout's all about sacrifice. In those in those times and periods where you're wanting to quit and you're wanting to give up, think about how much this workout is a sacrifice, what the bigger picture is here, and why we really do this workout every year. So that was a lot of information to throw at you guys. If you have questions, I would love to help out any way that I can. Let me know some things that you're excited about training for Murph or if this is your first Murph or how many Murphs you've done before. Because like I said, I love doing this workout every year. And I'd love to kind of hear some feedback on if it's your first Murph, if it's your 10th Murph or anything in between. So if you guys found anything helpful, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. I will also leave the two previous videos that I've done the last two weeks. If you missed those, make sure you check those out next. And like I said, make sure you go download that free PDF document that I have on my website. Like I said, it's a full Murph 2024 prep guide. It's going to give you some more structure on things to test so that you can show up and be ready for Murph Day. So thanks for tuning in, guys. Have a great Murph, and I'll see you guys in